Shane and today in Homemade Science, I want to take a look at a simple lab activity on cooling by evaporation. Imagine for a moment you're at the beach and it's sweltering hot. So hot that after a while you have to run into the ocean to cool off. After a few moments you come back out of the ocean and put a towel on because you're feeling really cold. The air temperature hasn't changed, so why does your body feel so cold? To investigate, we'll use several little dropper bottles filled with rubbing alcohol. And start this activity by simply taking the alcohol and placing five drops of it on the back of your hand. What do you notice? Record your results every 10 seconds for the next 60 seconds. Now after making your observations, let's try it again. Five more drops. Two, three, four, five. But this time, blow across your hand. I told you notes. It gets cooler. Once again, record your results for 10 seconds for 60 seconds. How is this child different than the first set? It felt like it was getting colder, but is it really or is it just fooling our senses? Well, there's an easy way to test it, and for that we need a thermometer, some paper towel, and a rubber band. Start by cutting a small strip of paper towel. We're simply going to take that and wrap it around the base of the thermometer and then use a rubber band to hold it in place. Something like this. Now after we have the thermometer all set up, first thing we want to do is take the initial temperature, then we're going to add 10 drops of the alcohol, 5 on the front side, 5 on the back side, take the temperature again, and now wave it back and forth and record the temperature every 15 seconds for the next 3 minutes. The thermometer readings confirm our results. So what's going on here? Your skin feels colder because some of the liquid molecules have high kinetic energy. They're able to break free from the surface and escape off into the atmosphere. The liquid molecules remaining behind have less thermal kinetic energy. Some thermal kinetic energy from your hand transfers into that liquid, giving them more energy and allowing more of the liquid to evaporate off into the atmosphere. This process continues until all the liquids evaporated. Why does blowing on it make a difference? The air movement across the surface reduces the atmospheric pressure and makes it a little bit easier for those liquid molecules to escape off into the atmosphere. This reduction in pressure is an example of Bernoulli's principle. Now we can set up the same experiment here. I have a thermometer, I have a timer, and I also have a fan so I don't have to wave it back and forth. So we can watch it in real time and see what actually happens. All right, we have the fan going. So our next step is we're gonna add 10 drops of the rubbing alcohol to the thermometer bulb. And it starts at about 75 degrees and we'll let the timer run. We can see the temperature steadily dropping and we'll run this for about three minutes. Students typically found the temperature dropped about 12 to 15 degrees. Well, there it is, the cooling by the evaporation of a liquid. Now, the question is, why did we use alcohol instead of water? Would that have worked better or worse? Would we have gotten a bigger temperature drop? That might be something you want to explore. Looking around, we can find all sorts of examples of cooling by evaporation. A classic physics toy is the drinking bird. When his head gets wet, the water starts to evaporate on that red material, which lowers the temperature inside that container and causes the gas inside to condense, which draws the liquid up the tube. In some instances, we can have a rapid change in temperature if the surface is hot enough. Why is water so good at putting out a fire? Now the fire is actually put out for two reasons. As water hits those hot embers, it lowers the temperature of the wood below its kindling point. There's also a lot of steam produced that blocks the air from the fuel. 
By heating this brass ball, we'll get a clear look at the steam that's produced as the water vaporizes. The ball is well above the boiling point of water, so it changes some of it to steam instantly. And as it does so, of course, the ball cools down. The steam that's produced by the campfire is also helping to smother the flames. Obviously, here the process is much slower, but it's the same transfer of energy that cools your skin as the liquid evaporates. Cooling by evaporation is used in the cooling towers for nuclear power plants. One large tree may have the same cooling effort as 10 room-sized air conditioners thanks to a process called evapotranspiration. This is the evaporation of water from the leaves where the water vapor is released from small openings called stomatas. Now, sometimes when it gets really hot, you can build your own simplified version of an air conditioner. In this case, it's called a swamp cooler. Now this simple version doesn't have any pumps, so every so often you'd have to take this towel and dip it back down into the tray to get it nice and wet, hang it back up again, and if you feel the air in the back versus the air in the front, that feels really cool. Well, I hope this video has given you a little bit better insight into this process called cooling by evaporation. As always, I want to thank you for watching and come back and see me again. Okay, bye!